If coffee quality is important to you and you're looking for a brew kit, stick around. This is a titanium mocha pot. The titanium resists coffee leaching, so you'll always get a consistent and pure flavor, which is really nice. And to me, the best part about the system is that it's a one-stop shop for making coffee. You don't need an extra pot or an extra cup or anything like that. It's all in one. So let's take a look at the components and you'll see what I mean. So there are two separate chambers. The top part is your cup, which holds the percolated coffee, and the bottom is for boiling the water. The bottom chamber also holds your funnel, which holds your coffee grounds for the percolation. That's it. This is all you need to make a cup of coffee. Did I mention that it only weighs 190 grams? It's ultra light, titanium strong. Let's take a closer look. So the two chambers are fused together using a rotating snap-on design. At first glance, I thought it looked weak, but then I noticed an extra titanium band on the inside which is used to strengthen the locking mechanism. Since it uses pressure to push the water up the funnel, this needs to be a tight fit. There is also a seven ounce scale, but only about five ounces will make it into the cup. The funnel is a little short, so there will be some water left in the bottom of the chamber, which is a good thing since the fine grounds of espresso will always make it through the filter. You really want that stuff to stay at the bottom. The silicone sealing ring is heat resistant. Mine may look a little stained right now, but that's just because of a poor job of my dishwasher. It does its job of keeping everything sealed in. There's also a carefully sized pressure release hole to ensure that you have the correct flow. The first couple times I used it, I was getting coffee grounds in my coffee. Not the fine residue, but actual coffee grounds in the cup. I noticed that both filters had a convex shape to them. Through trial and error, I found I got the best brew or the cleanest brew when the smaller bottom filter had the convex side facing up and the convex side of the larger top filter facing down. All you have to do now is lock both chambers together so it's nice and tight. If not, you'll have coffee spewing all over the place and running down the side. I made that mistake once, only once, and there's nothing worse than the smell of burnt coffee. Let's go ahead and brew a cup. We're gonna use the Firebox Freestyle in a three panel configuration. To get into this configuration, you just need to remove panel number three.
I will also be using the uh, Tooks Titanium Alcohol Stove, which fits perfectly into this three panel configuration. You have to use these slots to get the necessary clearance. This clearance gap is exactly one inch. Now, since this pot is only three inches in width, you will need more than two sides to support it for a full flame contact. If you try to use a fire stick for the third side support, you will notice that there is still a gap. It's because the fire stick sits about two millimeters deeper than the top of the panel. This is enough of a gap to tip your pot over from a stiff breeze. Ask me how I know that. I would recommend that the wind dampener be raised to its fullest upright position so it can be used for support. Okay, enough talking. Let's brew. I found that two tablespoons of ground coffee makes a good morning blend. Not too weak, not too strong, right around the middle. You want to make sure that there's no coffee grounds around the ceiling ring.
Once the coffee's reached the top of the spout, you're done. Now doesn't that look delicious? At this point, you can drink the coffee out of the pot, but I like to pour it into a cup. That way, I can separate the coffee from some of the residue that makes it up the funnel. Alrighty folks, thanks again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing and have a good burn.